All right, we continue doing differentiation from first principles. Before we considered exam styles question, which was actually medium level. Right now, we're going to go to harder problems that you might meet for you guys pretty challenging. So make sure you remember how to work with the differentiation from first principles. Make sure you know how this formula works. And if not, just check the video out about explanation how it can be derived and graphical explanation as well and make sure you also watch the previous video about medium level problems right now we're gonna go to harder questions grab your pens grab your notes and let's start doing so we have point p and the point q with the following coordinates and they're both lie on the curve with the equation fx x squared plus 2x minus 1. you need to determine the value of y1 and also gives an expression for y2 in terms of h, okay? So where is h? It's right there, okay? So what we're going to do, we just need to write the following expression for y1 and y2. Let's first take y1, and as we know, function by definition, we can plug the argument um, x equals to 1, then hence we can find the value for y1. So that's why y1 and for the point P, y1 will be equal to, uh, we plug in 1 everywhere, and we can say that x equals 1, so we'll get the following expression. If we simplify, we'll get just 2. So y1 equals 2, and we fix this result. And for y2, we do the same for the point q. So in point q, x equals 1 plus h. So we're taking this whole argument and plugging instead of x in the function. Okay, So hence, we will get y2 in this matter. 1 plus h squared, that's the first term, plus 2 times 1 plus h and minus 1 finally, okay? I'm not going to simplify, but we already got the expression for y2 in terms of h, as you can see here on the right side. There is only h and some free coefficients, all right? So that's why we accomplished a. That was at the point q, and that was in the point p. Right now, what we're going to do, we just need to find the gradient of the segment pq. Just remember how we can do that. We just simply need to use that slope, right? So we do, we calculate the gradient of that slope, basically the gradient of that line connecting two points, and it can be done using the change in coordinates. So that's why, by definition, the gradient for PQ is simply the difference in y coordinates of those points, so this is y2 minus y1, over x difference. So I'll write first x2 minus x1. And now I'm just going to plug. So y2 is this long expression, 1 plus h squared plus 2, I expand now, plus 2h minus 1, and then I take away y1, which is 2, and everything I divide by x2 minus what? x1. So 1 plus h minus 1. I'll get h only. Okay, so that how it works. And right now I'm going just to simplify. 1 plus h squared. 2h left and 2 will be cancelled as you can see here. 2 and 2 will be cancelled. So that's why right now... I will get plus 2h and minus 1, and over h. And indeed, we got the gradient pq that is all, only defined by the, by the constant h, basically representing the step. So if you just go back to the graph, we understand that exactly this change in the x-coordinates between points p and q uh, is denoted by step h, and that's why your expression is completely dependent on that, okay? Because function is also dependent from h, okay? And right now, using the concept of limits, find the derivative of the function fx at point p. Just go back to the graph again, 
And what if we start moving your point Q very close to P? That's why we're taking the limit, right? Limit when H is simply this horizontal change in coordinates, in X coordinates of those two points becomes very, very tiny, small. In other words, we're going to use the concept of the limits. So right now we just need to apply this and we can write that the derivative f prime x f prime from x at point p in other words at the point x equals one so we can even write that so x equals one will be equal to and what i'm going to do i'm going to use that except for i put the limit before this expression for the gradient of the chord pq so okay now I just simply expand brackets and say that I'll get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. That's what I will have right now. Then plus 2h minus 1. That's the top of the fraction and h in, is in the bottom. Okay, so uh, I'll get those ones cancelled. Okay, and right now I'll just completely arrive to the expression. Sorry, before I need to put a limit, of course. H is very tiny. And what I've got, I've got the frac the top of the fraction H, H squared plus 2H plus 2H. So I'll get H squared plus 4H and over H. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just taking factor H as the common. And because H can be factorized, I simply can cancel by H right now. We need to know that h is not zero. It's very close to zero, but it's not. So finally, I'll have an expression h plus four. And what we supposed to do? We need to find the gradient. So find the derivative, in other words. Okay, gradient at the point p. So what we're gonna do? We can put the limits and say that h is completely equal to zero. Right now we can't do that because there is no violation of ordinary operations. So that's why if I squeeze that and just lift up a little bit, okay, I will get that f prime at the point when x equals one, so from one, this is exactly derivative at the point p, will be equal to just four. And that's the final solution to the problem. If it's clear, so just let's move next. If it's not, just make sure you you actually watch the previous video for medium problems, for medium level problems. Okay, right now, uh, this is the big challenging for you guys, so get ready for this and let's start. You are given a function f, x with the following equation, one over x squared, okay? Using differentiation from first principles, you need to show that f prime has a specific expression with the limit. All right, okay. So in other words, um, we need to use this formula because it tells you about, again, differentiation from first principle, how you can find derivative. So that's why we just simply apply, try to apply this formula and say that uh, fx plus h, let's write fx plus h, is simply you plug in x plus h as the argument instead of x. You simply plug in that instead of x and you will get 1 over x plus h squared. Okay, perfect. So that's why on top of that fx plus h will have the following structure. Okay, we'll get 1 over x plus h squared. Okay, then we take away fx. So fx is our regular function, one over x squared. There is no problem, you just put that down and you divide it by h. Okay, now it's the right time to simplify and say that f prime from x will be equal to limit, h is very close to zero. And what I'm gonna do, because I divide by h, it simply means that h goes there 
and I will use the idea of common denominator. So x squared goes here and x plus h squared goes crisscross there. So that's why I will get the following x squared minus x plus h squared and everything over h times the common denominator. In this case, the common denominator is x squared and x plus h squared. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to simplify the top. So using the formula a squared minus b squared, I can factorize, I mean, yeah, represent as factors. So what I'm going to have right now, limit h tiny, and here's, I'll get x minus x and minus h, so finally I'll get minus h, and the sum x plus x plus h, so I'll get 2x plus h, okay? Make sure you can simplify those algebraic fractions. And finally I'll get h times x squared and x plus h squared, okay? That's almost the final here. And finally, f prime. So we need to show that, and that means we already got it. So have a look indeed. We have h, sorry. We'll have negative h and h here canceled. So this minus still, we need to keep and uphold at the top part, for example. And final we'll get negative before negative put the limit h is tiny and we'll get minus 2x plus h over the same denominator x squared and x plus h squared. Okay, so we've done that and we go to the next one. So question B, we complete A. Congratulations if you got a same. That means you got a principle. Okay, let's go, let's work on B. So on question B, what we need to do? Okay, question B, we need to do the following. We need to figure out that f prime from x is negative two over x cubed. So in other words, we need just apply the limit concept, right? So we have f prime, equals to that limit and right now we just need to apply that limit. There is no restrictions we can plug h equals zero everywhere because we in this case we won't violate any rules. So f prime from x after applying the limit concept so we say that h is zero we'll get following so negative 2x over x squared and again x squared. That will we finally get. Obviously x, in this case, domain any x except for 0. So that's domain of the function. Make sure you remember what domain for the function and range, just in case. And here we can cancel x and x squared, so that's why having that x is not equal to 0. We can cancel and say that we'll get negative two over, and the rest part is gonna be x cubed. So that's why we proved that. Now for those who already used techniques of derivatives, now let's check it that it's true. And this is the, always the hint for you guys. If you're given on the exam, on the test, differentiation from first principle, make sure you can check technically. So let's take derivative f prime from x from there. So because you can flip the power, you'll get x negative 2. And if you take derivative from that, you'll get negative 2x to the negative 3. And then you put this back, you flip the fraction, and say that's going to be negative 2 over x cubed. As you can see, technically, so this is, that was done technically, okay? It works within seconds. However, to prove that, actually, you need to waste lots of time. Okay, so make sure you got the concept that was challenging. And don't forget to watch other videos uh, related to LOL. If you need to refresh your knowledge, 
So please go back to GCC specific topics like gradients, straight lines, no matter that plenty stuff that you can practice, revise, and just for using as some reference. Okay, and don't forget to visit A level resilience classes. Okay. Thank you guys and see you next time. Peace.